Thank you, Dean. Our last speaker is uh, Mr. Ravi Chandran, Director for Center for Instructional Technology. He will be presenting on Educational Technology Trends and NUS Initiatives. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, My title is uh, Higher Education IT Trends, uh, specifically in teaching and learning. Uh, being in January, this could be called historical trends now, <laughs> but, but it's, still going, it's still going on. Many of these things are still fairly new and still being discussed now. Okay, so uh, Higher Education IT Trends in Teaching and Learning. Uh, the new students coming today on campus uh, they have new learning strategies, uh, new forms of engagement. Okay, so they're not just uh, consuming information now. Uh, previously, they were just consumers of information, passive learners. Now they're not just consuming information, they are actively curating the information. They're searching for the information, sieving the information, uh, deciding what to keep, what, no, what not to keep, more actively collaborating with the information, of course, exchanging files, exchanging photographs, and creating, and more importantly, creating new information, publishing new information variety of publishing platform. So the student is more or less creating his own personal learning environment. This is what's happening now. They're having their own personal learning environment, their own personal favorites, their own personal applications. The NUS site is just one of the many of his favorite sites. So you'll have NUS, Facebook, and all the other sites that he's looking at every day. Okay. Uh, I, I was hearing during the, the speeches, some of you felt that the students are just not as tech savvy as they, as they say they are, which is true. I have noticed that. Uh, a lot of students coming out of campus are just not tech savvy at all. So they also have, they only know how to maybe serve the web, you know, Word documents, PowerPoint documents. But I think this is changing slowly as, a, as the new students keep coming up because I know that the primary schools, secondary schools, you, you're, you're starting to introduce a lot more technologies coming in. So it's slowly changing. The students will be coming in this kind of direction. Every year, we have this thing called the Horizon Report. Uh, this is a report that more or less uh, tells us what are the hot technologies the universities around the world are looking at. What are they going to be implementing? What are the budgets they're going to be putting in implementing technologies in one year or less? Two to three years or less? Four to five years or less? Left. So in uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, this is, this is their prediction. These are the technologies which the universities are really focusing on, uh, developing on and implementing. So in 2012, they were saying... Uh, Mobile applications, tablet computing, uh, two to three years, of course, game, learning analytics, using uh, data models to, do, to, to predict the student's performance, and uh, gesture-based and smart devices, devices communicating with each other. This was in 2012. So we're not sure about 2013, but in my view, I feel uh, it's going to be mobile apps, going to be very big, mobile applications going to be very big, and of course, mobile access. A lot of students want mobile access to the services, not just apps. Not just mobile learning, but access to the services, mobile access to services. I feel video will be very big. A video for education will be very big. Not because of the mobile technology also. You know the mobile phones, you've got a cameras there. They're getting, quite, they're getting quite good and quite powerful. I've seen students recording with the mobile phones. So I feel, and then the software is getting easier to edit the videos. It's also free, more or less free. Okay, there's a lot of free software out there. And the publishing platforms are, there's a variety of publishing platforms for videos. So I find videos will be getting quite a lot of traction coming in. And these videos will, of course, lead to more online courses, flipped classroom being created, these kind of things. And I feel also e-books will, will become much more uh, prominent, much more pervasive with the tablets. At the moment, the tablets are not, that, not there yet. There's still pockets, people using tablets all around, but it's not there yet because the content is not there. So you've got to bring in the e-books in. If there are more and more e-books, the tablets will pick up. So these are the things that we think was going to happen. Four or five years, I can't predict that at all. But I think these are the big things that are going to happen maybe in 2013. So uh, video for education, entertainment. I'll give you an example. This is a device, a mobile accessory that can record. It's like a personal cameraman for you. So uh, it's called a swivel and uh, runs on the iPhone. Let's see. Okay. 
What you're looking at is one of the very first swivels off the line. It's a mobile accessory that makes it easy for you to video yourself. It comes with a marker, a base, and an app on your iPhone. Basically, you rotate the phone holder up and swing a cable out to connect up to your phone. And you have an app that you pull up along with it. The swivel brings it up. And you use it by connecting the phone to the cable and dropping it in the grip. The last step is you pair up the marker with the base. As you can see, it starts to follow you. And then from that point forward, it follows you wherever you go. You also get uh, tilting functionality as well. You hold a button on the marker, you can see that it resets itself to a different level. And now you can shoot in different orientations. So this is a kind of a personal camera man that can, uh, you can start recording. This is about uh, 200 Sing dollars now. It's available in Singapore. So these are the things that are happening all the time. And you know, it's getting easy to record videos. Another thing that's being discussed is, of course, this thing called learning analytics. Uh, this is to, this is to uh, use all the data sources that a student is interacting. In this case, in the, in the case of NUS, all these data sources which a student is interacting with then using data models and data analysis to predict the student's performance. Okay? The aim is to intervene early, to identify the weaker students. Okay? So using the data models and data analysis techniques, you hopefully can identify the, student, the weaker students early, intervene early, and hopefully improve his performance before the exam. So this is called learning analytics. Okay? So uh, the biggest challenge is, of course, now to identify all the data sources, sources which the students are interacting with. Uh, I'll just click on this first. Let's see what happens. It's going to take some time. <laughs> I should have done that. It's going to take some, some time. On IVLE, we are already collecting all these data sources. How are the students interacting with IVLE? What are the discussion forums they're doing? So we are already building up a kind of a usage intelligence center. This is not official yet. So you can see now we have... Uh, all these data sources, all these statistics on the usage of IVLE. How are you using IVLE? Which browser is the most popular browser? Uh, which operating system is being used? How many times are the students logging in? How many times are the students logging in? Uh, how, how many times are they logging in every month? Every time, what time of the day are they logging in? Okay. Uh, which is the most popular uh, module? So we are going to collect all these statistics and hopefully start building up these analytics. Okay, this is just one example of uh, how learning analytics is. The aim is to build as much data sources as possible. Another, another, uh, another trend is, of course, this thing called adaptive learning. It's a kind of a software, intelligent software, that more or less adapts the content and the delivery of the content to the, based on the knowledge level of the user. So it's more, like, more or less like customized content being delivered to you. Okay, to every student. So if a student doesn't know uh, certain, certain topics, the, this software will decide on that and deliver the content to him on the, on, a, and on the pace of his delivery. So it's like an intelligent tutoring system for you. And there is already a, such a software on the market. It's called Newton. So if you, if you Google for it, you'll see uh, Newton. And it's being used by one or two universities overseas already. Kind of a personal tutoring system. So these are two of the uh, two uh, important... Uh, trends that are happening in the education space, mainly the learning analytics part of it. Uh, I think you all know that the uh, IVLE, of course, our NUS cost management system, but many of you are not aware that it's actually an open system. When I mean open system, I mean that students, staff, companies can write into IVLE and develop their own applications. Okay, They can develop their own applications. There's no way that the IVLE team can develop and customize applications to all your needs. So what they've done is they've gone for this crowdsourcing approach. This is actually what the government has also done with the data.gov.sg. What we do is that we open up the interface, open up the interface and let the students, let the staff, let companies develop customized applications to suit their own learning style, own learning preference. And actually our students have already done that. There are lots of applications on the internet done by our students Running on, running on many mobile devices that can access IVLE based on their own learning needs. The most popular ones now are this thing called Arctic Cube. 
It's an iValley desktop application when you install on your desktop. It synchronizes with all the files on your work bin and brings it to your desktop. It's like a Dropbox integration. So whatever, whatever is on the work bin, it synchronizes to the desktop. If you post an announcement on your iValley work, on your iValley announcements, it's put in your desktop automatically. So wherever you go, it's like an offline iValley. And I think it'll be downloaded a few, uh, few hundred times already by students. Arctic Cube. Yeah. The other one is Mod iValley. This is also another iValley application done by students. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if you look at it. Uh, it says, uh, less noise, more work. So, uh, what, it, what it's saying is that iValley minus all the clutter, minus all the nonsense that we are providing. Okay. So, it, all, if you use that app, app, you only have three things. Work bin, announcement, forum. That's what the students want. They don't, they don't want to know about their other stuff, you know, all those things. These are three things that he has put up there, and it's very, very popular. So these are all apps that have been de designed, developed by students. You even have an app done by a student on webcast that allows them to write over the webcast apps. So this is the strategy that the iValley team is adopting now. Opening up the interface, encouraging the students to write their own customized apps and build up from there. We're also starting to pay the students to maintain it. So the students are being paid now to maintain some of these apps. Of course, you have, uh, many of you have already said a lot of students are already using Facebook, but do you know that you can associate your Newsnet account to Facebook? So when you log in to Facebook, you can log in with your Newsnet account, of course, with your Facebook uh, password, but you'll get welcome to groups at NUS. All the NUS groups will be associated with it now. So you link your Newsnet account to your Facebook account, and you can log in with your Newsnet account now. Okay, and there are hundreds of uh, NUS groups created under the NUS umbrella now. Of course, flip classroom. I won't uh, mention it. I mean, you're, you're all aware of that, right? The classroom being flipped. But two or three years ago, this was already called blended learning. Uh, they're already calling it blended learning, uh, a mixture of face-to-face -face versus online learning. And of course, we have this thing coming up now, uh, online education. Uh, things like Course Era, Uda City, edX, Khan Academy, where the courses are already free, high quality courses free, well designed, well, well, well designed and well transmitted. And the reason they are very popular is of course because the top universities are already providing it. And the, and the courses and the quality of the courses are good. Uh, these kind of things, online education is also called MOOCs, uh, massive. Massive open online courses. Uh, they also call MOOCs, massive open online courses, or OERs, open education resources. This is getting a lot of traction, a lot of popularity, and um, there are, of course, many faculty asking whether NUS does participate in this, this enterprise, you know. So um, I think NUS is considering it, but I'm not sure yet. So, but before we proceed with that, before we even join into this or do other projects, we've got to ask ourselves, what do the students really want? From our own surveys and from surveys, even from EDUCOS, uh, uh, the students are telling us they want face-to-face -face instruction. They want face-to-face -face instruction, but they want flexibility in the course delivery. Over 13 weeks, they want a few weeks to be online. They like the face-to-face -face instruction. They want it, but they want some uh, flexibility in the delivery. So not everything face-to-face, -face, maybe some... Some flip classroom in between, they, they would like to have that. Uh, of course, they rely on their desktop PCs for real work, but they also want supplementary materials. They want not just the lecture notes, they want also other resources related to the course they are taking, uh, like access to the free courses that I mentioned, uh, e-books, web links, those kind of things that are related to the course, not just course materials. And they want tools that, that make them more productive in what they're already doing. Uh, by this, they, I mean downloading the lecture notes faster communicating with the lecturer faster. You know, those kind of things, things that make them more efficient, more productive in their work. And of course, they want regular feedback on the progress, not just at the end of the semester. And they want the ability to decide when, where, and how to receive the information. If the information is there, it should be available 24 hours a day. It should be accessible by the phone, those kind of things. So this is what the students really want. Or this is what they're saying that they want. So, this is the NUS approach. Just to summarize what we have, uh, what NUS is going to be doing. 
you are aware of this is this uh, five million dollar lift fund uh, the grant uh, uh, lift is sent for learning innovation fund for techno uh, for teaching and there are two calls of proposals every year the main thing is it's going to be a more a ground up initiative that is coming from the faculty themselves they are going to decide how to use technology they are going to decide how technology can improve the learning outcomes for the course so they have to decide and then submit the proposals but there are already pilots in engineering science medicine and usp some of these courses some of these uh, faculty that have already presented today and of course these these projects, these proposals will be supported by CDTL, the Teaching Academy, Com Computer Center, and of course CIT, in terms of uh, pedagogical support, technology support, hardware support, infrastructure support. And, and many of these projects will then have outreach activities, sharing sessions uh, with, with other faculties to share the uh, you know, pros and cons of developing the, the, the project. The university will also be maintaining and enhancing current e-learning projects that impact education. A good example is uh, e-learning weeks will still carry on because they think that it does help uh, faculty learn more about technology. So e-learning weeks will carry on. And a few other projects that they've identified will carry on on top of these uh, proposals. And all these, all these activities will be coordinated by the uh, Technology Enhanced Task Force just formed, formed last year, in fact, chaired by the Provost Office. Okay? And the members are from the various faculties, CDTL, CIT, Computer Center also are involved in this task force. So this is more or less the, the general approach we're going to take. We're not going to go big bang into course era or, you know, or uh, do a top-down approach and say you all got to use technology, uh, every course has to be online, on IVLE, those kind of things. Going, it's going to be more like a ground-up initiative, sharing sessions, and then start identifying the projects that are really successful and then push it across the campus. I give you some examples of some projects that are going to be maintained. Good example is uh, active classroom projects. There is a project going around the faculty on the faculties now to redesign the classroom. If you want the students to be more collaborative, more engaging in the classroom, you need to redesign the classroom. It's no use going there and saying I want to be collaborative, I want to engage the students, but the classroom is like this, right? You got to redesign the classroom. So there are projects going on uh, around the campus uh, to get the faculties to take some money out of their pockets <laughs> and redesign the classroom. That's the problem, getting the uh, money from the faculty to redesign the classroom. This is the Faculty of Law. Uh, two classrooms are like this, Faculty of Law. Surprisingly, uh, they forked out about 20,000 to get this going. But CIT gave 50,000. So, uh, but it's, it's, it's very successful now. This is the uh, Faculty of Engineering. They've pushed, they've done one now. Faculty of Science, and of course, the rest are at U-Town. So, they, they, we are slowly starting to get the faculties to start think, rethinking how to redesign the classrooms. And the feedback and the surveys that you've done from the students after the classroom are designed has been very positive, in fact. They want this, they come in there, they see a different environment, they know it's going to be different. They know the classroom is going to be more engaging. They are expecting something different. Okay, so this is, this help uh, that way. Of course, the... Uh, we will still be maintaining another project that's going to be maintained is, of course, the uh, uh, tablet loan scheme. This semester, not, it's not just iPads, it's going to be the Galaxy tabs also. So we're going to loan out both uh, the Samsung Galaxy tabs and the iPads to faculty and classes. All right. I think this is my last slide. Uh, do you have any questions on uh, these IT trends that I can answer? Thank you very much. After the classrooms have been designed, so they didn't do that before. 
Okay, so what has been done is they've just done survey saying how have the students reacted to the classroom? Do they like the classroom? Do they like the environment? Those are the kind of data that are collected, unfortunately. Yeah, but everyone likes new shiny right, things. Right, correct. Yeah. You're, you're right about that. I think that's going to be done by the faculty themselves. Because they're going to be forking out the money to redesign the classroom. Yeah. You're going to do something? Uh, thank you, oh. Mr. Ravi. Okay, thank you very much.